Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to question the answer how these non-contact voltmeters work to the vast majority of our fellow humans. It's JFM. Just fucking magic. However, we guys what keep your lights on and your beers cold are where twos and why four types. It's a disease. We're going to find out how this actually works. That's, uh, what do you call a carpenter working in an electrical enclosure? Dead. And this answer come on us by chance, by way of the patron, what, uh, well, a new patron, what, put two bucks in the hat and then demand it that uh, yours truly, Uncle Bumblefuck, answers the question. Now, normally I would tell him uh, where his hat was located at and where to to get. If we jump right into it, chances are you're not going to comprehend. So we got to go step by each and build up our understanding. If you can't understand the whole because it's either too complicated, which this is not, or because it's counterintuitive, we do step by each and just build it up until we can understand the whole. Uh, what I got here is just a power supply and we'll, we'll have her on two and a half volts. We are going to make a voltage divider and a voltage divider is two resistors or three, whatever, two different resistors. Now, I got this set real low on voltage. If you're looking for uh, sparks and, and booming, there's a very handsome young Persian man with lovely eyebrows that you can go and check out by the name of Electro Boom Channel. Oh, so we're out putting four volts here, zero amps because it's open circuit. Now we'll do this. And we'll do this. And now what we will do is take the center tap. So there's four volts drop across here. And the voltage divider allows us to have three volts drop across the one resistor and 9, 0.9 volts across the other one. Of course, I just got to change the polarity there. That might mess you up. There you go, 0.9 volts. So if this is how we easily get lower voltage out of a resistor, if we have, say, a 9-volt battery going in and we only need 5 volts, we can use a resistor divider and just change the values of these and that'll give us different voltages and we can tap off. Okay, so that is on DC. Now this guy ostensibly works on the same type of thing, only instead of a resistive divider, it's a capacitive divider. Okay, a capacitor is like a battery. It, it uh, resists the change in voltage in a circuit. So when you first click it on, when you, when you go from zero volts to nine volts, when you click on your device, these charge up and they resist the change in voltage. Then when you turn it off, they resist the change in voltage and they supply nine volts into the circuit. And the way they do that is they have two platens uh, separated by an insulating layer. So what happens is the electrons go to one side and then the positive uh, holes of electrons, the missing electrons go to the other side. Okay, so that's what works for DC. That builds up a charge there. And that charge is like a battery. Here's the beauty of capacitors is that when you have AC, now instead of a positive plate and a negative plate, what's happening is the electrons are moving back and forth, right? Sinusoidal, it's AC. It's like these things don't even fucking exist. The AC goes right through capacitors. And if you check out Electroboom's channel, that is why AC power hurts a hell of a lot more than DC power because your body is acting, it has capacitance and it's acting as a capacitor and you get a hell of a lot more of a bite off AC voltage than off DC. Now here is our voltage divider for an AC circuit. Now make a believe that I'm connecting one lead here and one lead here. On the smaller capacitor, we are going to have a large voltage drop. On the bigger capacitor, we are going to have a smaller voltage drop because the impedance on the bigger is lower. So it's got a lower resistance, got a lower voltage drop. So if I plug these into the wall, which I'm not going to do because they're electrolytic and they have to be polarized, there's a plus and a minus, and of course AC, there's no plus and minus, so it blows right the fuck up. I'm not going to do that. But 
in our mind's eye, we put the meter on here, we'll see a certain voltage. We put the meter across these two leads here, we'll see another voltage, a different voltage. Okay, how does, how, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. How many electricians does it take to uh, install a light bulb? It's just the one, but two weeks to bring it up to code. <laughs> Diagrammatically, this is what these two capacitors look like. And we have AC going through here. So we have a plate here that's getting charged up and a plate here that's getting charged up the opposite way, of course, 60 times a second. So it's like these don't even exist. The AC goes right through them, goes right through them. But there is a voltage drop. If we check this voltage V, there's a different value on this guy than there is on this guy. And we can measure that if we connect it up. Now, we take a wire, what's got power going through it. What we do is we consider this wire, this one platen. And then we consider the tip of this tool, this other platen. Then we consider the tip of the tool. This is the same plate, of course. So the tip of the tool is this platen of the capacitor. And this platen of the capacitor is your body. You are a capacitor. You are capacitively coupled with every AC unit, every AC signal going. You're capacitively coupled. But your capacitance is so high that you don't get shocked because there's very little current going through you. Tiny, minute amounts of current. So knowing that uh, you can't do anything with the current. It's useless because it's so small. However... What happens if we take that current and we amplify it, we increase, we embiggen the signal. Now, all of a sudden, we can detect the voltage across here, and it tells us when we, when we are close to live wires. That's the little one. It's the mean one. It's live. Here's the neutral. Not live. The short, curly, and stinky of it is this little device is induct or is, is turning you into a capacitor and it is measuring the voltage drop internally in order to tell you if it's touching, if it's close to a, uh, a powered wire. And well, let's have a look at it. And unfortunately, there's nothing for it. No way to get in. No user serviceable parts. So we're just going to have to. Take one for the team, if I can get in there. Nah. Oopsie doodle. Now we're in like sin and she's proper dickered. We can see we got a little hen indicating LED and a, a, a bayonet here. That's an antenna. And if we look further, we got the button pressing switches. We got two AA batteries. We got a confuser here and no capacitors to speak of. No capacitors to speak of. How the fuck does this work then? If it's not working the way they tell us it's supposed to work. Conveniently, it's a rather trivial affair to build your own non-contact voltage detector. So if you're an electric chicken or similar ilk, ain't no big thing. What we do here, and it also, so just plug that in. Have a look at this. Elec chicken goes to the, uh, there we go. Not that side, that side is the conductor. Also, this style will detect if you have any static electricity build up on you. Uh, not really anything, let me go uh, rub some carpet. The better three quarters declined. That's why she's the better three quarters. So we got some polypropylene fibrous stuff. I'll just rub on my hair. And that'll build up a charge. And I hit the bouton. You get a little blip. And we touch the probe. Ha ha! Lots of static buildup. The construction of the Favrikovold version here is essentially the same as the proper Elec, minus the cromulence, of course, is as the proper Elec Chickens one. What's going on here is we have an antenna, 
And then we have amplifiers. So these are uh, BJTs, uh, bipolar junction transistors. That was a mouthful. And what we are doing is we are increasing the gain. So each one, think of each one of these as a gear reduction. And we are daisy chaining them. We're, we're pigging, we're, we're cascading them so that the output of one goes into the input of another and the input of another. So we get a tiny little voltage signal here that is leaking from my body, the electrons built up on my body, leaking from my body to wherever the hell they need to go. They're forming a circuit. And that circuit is the on trigger for these current devices. Now these are analog devices. So I put a little current in and I get more current out. That more current out goes to this guy. I put a little bit more of that current from here in, I get more current out. And I get even more current out on this third uh, step. And we actually get power running from here into the uh, end of the YouTube buddy here. So that is what's happening. We are amplifying that signal in order to get a, a light to turn on and a, a buzzer to chooch in this case. So what is going on here? It's a little bit smarter. Uh, they're using shot key, uh, not shot key, Schmidt triggers. And what a Schmidt trigger is, instead of being an analog, I put a little bit in and I get a certain amount of gain. A Schmidt trigger is like a pregnancy test. You know, you can't, you can't be sort of pregnant. You're either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. The Schmidt trigger is the same way. It's either on or off. So it takes an analog signal invented in the 30s, right? By some brainiac, likely name of Schmidt. So what happens is we get an analog signal in from the AC like this. And these Schmidt triggers, a whole bunch of them all cascaded up, end up giving you an on-off signal like that. We turn that on off signal into straight one or zero on or off. That gives us the buzzer and the light. And that is how it works. You are capacitively coupled in the AC circuit. When you're using one of these chicken sticks, it amplifies the signal and uh, tells you not to touch because you're going to fry your fillings. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.